Hey everyone, in this lesson we are moving on to cones and finding the surface area of cones. So on this first slide I have two different diagrams. I have kind of the three-dimensional picture of a cone along with the net of a cone. So there's a cone and there is a net of a cone. So it's kind of an interesting looking net, but it makes sense if you kind of folded that shape up, you would end up with, with a three-dimensional figure. So a couple reminders as we go into cones, we have a circle base. So when we're dealing with circles, the big things we need to remember with this lesson is that the radius is halfway across the circle and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So two things we've talked about before, um, but are important specifically to this lesson. And then we're also going to be using the slant height. Cones are kind of similar to pyramids. They're kind of like a pyramid with a circle base. So we're still going to remember that L stands for slant height. And you can see those same things on the net. Here is your base. And then you kind of have your, your lateral. This is your lateral area right here. Okay, now um, one thing that you wouldn't necessarily know, um, but I'm going to tell you right now, is that the area of this lateral space is pi r l. That's how you're going to find it. So if you were looking for the total surface area, you would find the area of the base and you would add it to the area of that lateral spot, which is pi r l. Okay, so surface area formula can be written two ways. It can be written as just base plus pi r l, kind of like I have it with the net. Or we can remember that the area of the base is always going to be the same. It's going to be pi r squared because the base is going to be a circle every time. So maybe the easier formula to use is surface area equals pi r squared because it's a circle every time plus that lateral area, which is pi r l. Okay, so really this isn't a very difficult section because you only need to find two things. You need to find the radius and you need to find the slant height. And from there, it's just plugging everything into your formulas. So we're gonna look at two examples. Uh, the first one is this diagram here. It looks a little complicated, but not too bad. I think take your time to draw that. Cones aren't the, the hardest thing ever to draw. Um, and what we're given here is not the most important information that we need. Um, currently, we do not have the radius. We have the diameter. Um, this six centimeters was all the way across. If that wasn't obvious, I'll make that obvious. Um, and we only want half of that. So we actually just want this little chunk here, which is three centimeters. Okay. The other tricky thing is that we don't have the slant height. We don't have this guy out here okay but we do have a right triangle and we do have two sides of it we're just missing the hypotenuse so when that's the case we can always go back to our handy dandy pythagorean theorem um, in this one though i think we've seen enough right triangles um, by now that we know that if we have legs of three and four that that hypotenuse is going to be five it's called the pythagorean triple we've seen it a lot um, if not, you could always really quick do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals L squared. And you're going to get 9 plus 16 is L squared. And you're going to get 25. And then take the square root and you get 5 equals L. Okay. Um, but if you already know that a special right triangle or a, a Pythagorean triple here is 3, 4, 5, you can, you can skip all of this. This part would be optional if you already knew that third side. Now you're not always going to know it, but in this case, I think you probably do. Okay, so now I do think we have what we what we need. We found our slant height is 5, and we also know that our radius is 3. So we're good to go with our formula. We can just go up here, and we're going to have pi times our radius, which is 3 squared plus pi times that radius once again, times the slant height, which is 5. Okay. Now, what it, I haven't talked about much yet in this unit, but is kind of nice. Um, what you can do is you can leave things in terms of pi if you want. Um, 
that might happen on like an ACT or an SAT or something like that. Um, or you could, and you can do that and simplify at the end. So what I mean by that is we can do 3 squared equals 9, and 9 times pi can just be written as 9 pi. And then over here, we have 3 times 5, which is 15 times pi. So 15 pi. And then if we simplify that, 9 plus 15 is 24. So you could leave your answer as 24 pi centimeters squared. Or you could grab a calculator and type it in the way that we have been typing it in. So I'm going to hop on Desmos and just type it in that the way that we had it. So it was pi, 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 pi times 3 squared plus pi r l. And you can see that that answer is exactly the same as if we had just done 24 pi. Okay, either one of those is fine. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, we would go 75.39, but the next number is an 8, so we got to change our 39 to 40. So 75.40. And technically, we just rounded when we did that, so we would want a squiggly line. So either answer there is fine, 24 pi centimeters squared or 75.40 centimeters squared. All right, and then one more example. I actually did, did an easier one here, just one more chance to, uh, to plug some things in. So this time, we do have exactly what we are looking for. Uh, we have the radius already. We have the slant height already. Um, the only weird thing here is that our cone is kind of flipped on its side. Okay, so I'm just going to plug everything in here. So we have pi times 6 squared plus pi times 6 times 13.4. And this is one where we have decimals, so probably not the best idea to leave it in terms of pi. That's going to start looking kind of weird. So I think on this one, let's just punch it into Desmos. Plus pi times 6 times 13.4. And there we go, uh, about 365.68. And these ones are in square feet. And that'll do it. Go ahead and complete the practice for 11.5.